Using Processing.js will allow us to take our processing files and move them into a web page. Processing.js is hasn't been actively updated since 2014, but it does work with the current version of processing, so that bodes well for us. Our other alternative to use would be P5.js, which is then writing close to processing, but we're actually writing in JavaScript, so a lot of the language and syntax that we've worked with will update and change. So that's a little larger project to do the migration. For this, the migration to our processing code is almost negligible, which is why we're using this option. Now with processing JS, another challenge comes into play, and that is we will run into the cross-domain script security problem if the files that we are working with are not up on a web server. So we can't run the files locally on our machine unless we install a local web server or publish our files to an actual web page. So I've taken one of the files that we worked on previously, put it onto a web page, and I can now move around with it. I can shoot at, you know, said unicorn, etc. So this is now living on an actual web server. So it's up on the internet. To get our processing files working, what we are going to use locally when we are working on a Mac, we have a program called MAMP. MAMP has MAMP and MAMP Pro. It also has a Windows version. And MAMP is free. MAMP Pro you have to pay for. When you download it for the Mac, it downloads both and wants to install both and keeps prompting you to, hey, you should upgrade to Pro. We don't need Pro. So if it tells you to upgrade and pay money, you've clicked on the wrong thing. We want the free version of MAMP. Be forewarned, the download from their server is excruciatingly slow. So if you try and download it on even a fast internet connection, it is still a slow download. It's not that the file's that big, as their server is slow. So. With MAMP installed on these computers, it is the little elephant icon. We click on that and MAMP will come up. Now, one of the things that we need to do to make MAMP work on our computer is we will need to tell MAMP what is the starting page. Because otherwise, the starting page will be the hdocs folder that's part of the MAMP installation. So if I go into my preferences and go to web server, I will see that currently I need to change my document root and it's telling me it's in the hdocs folder of MAMP. So I go MAMP, here's my hdocs folder and then that is where if I put my web files into that folder I don't need to change anything on MAMP. But it, to me that's I don't want to put my files there. I want to change and tell it I want you to use my project folder as the starting folder. So what we can do instead is inside of MAMP under document root, I can go to the desktop and I can now choose my file folder or my project folder. So if you've downloaded the processing JS starter folder, you will see the folder is there. I can choose that as my starting file and and hit OK. And don't click the arrow which shows you what is, that just shows you the root. You click on the folder icon with the three dots and that allows you to select the folder that we want. And now I can choose select and now we see it updated the link here. I can hit OK. And now my next step is I click on start servers. If all goes well, I will see Apache server and MySQL server turn green, and it brings me to the MAMP homepage. Now, this is bringing me to the homepage inside the MAMP folder, but we don't want to be there. I'm going to delete everything after where it says localhost colon 8888. 
at that point I am looking at my index file. Now the reason that we have to do it this way is if I try to open my file directly, so I will open this index.html file, it comes up and we see nothing. So when working in Chrome, when we try to launch our project, we get an empty gray screen. If we look up in the console, we'll see that there are security errors that are preventing it from loading properly. And this is why we want to use the localized server of MAMP to make this happen. If MAMP is failing to install or run properly on your computer, it does seem that we can use Firefox as an alternative and open the file directly and it does work. So for the remainder of this demonstration today, we aren't going to worry about MAMP, but we will then use Firefox as our browser of choice as a way to see what we're doing since the files are loading correctly and directly inside of that. The key things that we are looking at in a starting file is we have a core HTML file. So this particular file is just a core template. You can add any other HTML to it as you want. A couple of things are required. One of the required elements is that we are loading the processing JS script. So in the folder that I am in, we can see there's the processing JS script. This is what it looks like if you want to try and read it. If you want to see the one that is not minimized, I do have the non-minimized one where the processing JS script is written in a way that is still human readable, barely, because you can see how long it is. It's significantly longer than the minimized version, which got rid of all of the extra white space. So it's not expected that you would ever read this. But this is now the script that allows our processing code to be able to be displayed and run inside a web page. And what it's doing is it's using JavaScript to write the contents of our processing sketch to an HTML canvas. So we have a canvas element and it says canvas data processing sources equals and then we have the name of our file that's being displayed and that is simply our processing file. The only change that was necessary to make this work with our file was having to add into my sketch the loading of my images as a preload statement because if I try to run my sketch on a web server if I don't preload the images before I ask my page to see them, I could run into display problems or errors. And once I hit an error like that, my page will stop running and then I'm kind of on a dead page. So the reason that these are broken into separate lines, it's short enough it could fit on one line is if I am trying to load multiple assets, it would be really hard to put them all in a comma list like that because if I look at, say, this other file, by putting them on separate lines, it makes it really easy to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste all of your individual image assets. This particular example, my game, is the one with the unicorn and the blinking eye. So we can see all 23 frames of the eye have been loaded and all six frames of the unicorn have been loaded as separate files. So it's slash star at pjs preload equals quotation mark and then we just put the names of the files we're loading. As you can see the white space, the extra returns that I added to make this more readable don't have an impact on the performance of the file. I don't need those extra returns but if you try to do this without those returns it's really annoying to type all of this in. So I prefer to do it. The one gotcha is to remember when you're copy pasting the same thing over then changing the numbers, the last one does not get a comma after it. 
that's really easy to forget that, then this line fails and then your program doesn't run and you're like, what's not working now? It used to work and then you're all upset and cry and it's work. Notice the path name. It says data. If you remember, we put our images in a data folder. Now, if you wanted to rename that data folder now that we're no longer in processing directly and call it images, you could rename the folder, change the line of code up here, because processing JS doesn't care. For that matter, you don't even need your images in a folder, but I think it gets really ugly if you don't have things organized into folders. When I am trying to load additional files, it's also important to remember in my load image command to add data here as well. Where in processing, it looks to the data folder automatically. It assumes you have the data folder. So you don't have to write that in. But now when I'm trying to load later on in my code, so if I use the load image command, I have to use the correct path name to that file. That's very, very important. In the starter file, if we look at that one, you will notice that one image file is in the data folder, one image file is not in the data folder. And we see that reflected in our preload statement. And I see it reflected in my two load image statements. One is in the data folder, one is not. I purposely constructed it this way to remind you explicitly of that difference so that you know that is what's happening. And again, if I wanted to change it from data to images, I could do that and it would still work just fine. In the starter file, you will notice the sketch is just one document. Now, if I show you my little unicorn game, you will notice that, let's see, I have my main variables, setup, load assets, draw, but after draw, and a few other fun functions, key presses, etc., then I have my bullet class. And after my bullet class, I have my enemy class. After my enemy class, I have my sprite class. What you notice is they are all in one document. So when we have a multi-tabbed file, like how we've been constructing it in processing, with separate tabs and separate PDE files for each class, you do need to copy-paste all of those elements into one single long document. It's not as readable because I have to scroll through to find things. It's nicer when you can click through in tabs, which is why we've been doing it that way before. But processing JS and loading this on the web page requires it to be in a single PDE file. When we look at names, the name of our sketch no longer has to match the name of its parent folder when we're using processing JS. Doesn't care. It just is important that if we have multiple classes before, we have to merge them all into one long, ugly file. In the HTML file, currently it loads the page as a block and puts it in the middle of the page. If you don't want to display it that way, you're welcome to modify the CSS, but it is setting it up with uh, with based on the sample file I provided, which was 600. If your project is not 600 pixels wide, you do need to change this style information to match your project. Otherwise, it won't center properly, if at all. So make sure you change that number, and then you'll be in good shape.